which I have now Stephen from Kohler. He's the chief executive of corporate and investment banking at Barclays Africa. And he joins me at the desk now to discuss Barclays Africa Group. Stephen, thank you so much for making the time to join us. Lots of changes over the last couple of years. We've seen uh, the re some rebranding. Maybe bring us up to speed in terms of what are the major changes we've seen in the past, say, 24 months and where Barclays Africa stands. So <coughs> the big change really has been the fact that ABSA, the old ABSA, bought all the African businesses from Barclays and then we listed as Barclays Africa Group. So we're now across 12 countries in in Africa and that's a big change that mm. sort of brings revenue from outside of South Africa to very close to 20 percent that was the the first change what really that that does for us instead of just being a local South African bank we actually now a local African bank and that's quite different from a lot of our competitors and that in every single country we're operating at the moment we actually have a full service bank from retail right through to wholesale and that's quite unique in a way. Normally people have a retail business in their home market mm. and wholesale outside their home market. We actually have them in all our markets, so it makes us quite, quite unique. The second thing that happened, uh, you would have seen, seen recently on May the 8th, Anthony Jenkins announced that he was dividing basically PLC into four businesses. Uh, two of them being growth businesses, one being Barclay Card as a global business, and ourselves being Barclays Africa. And so there's a lot of focus on us to now not just be a fully local, fully global bank, but also a fully regional bank. And maybe let me come in at that point, Stephen. Uh, a fully continental bank or regional bank, as you've put it, you're currently seeing about 20% of your revenues coming from the continent. And everybody's talking about the African growth story and how it's taking off. What are your uh, growth prospects for the rest of the continent? How much more growing do you see yourselves doing? So the growth is really going to come from the wholesale bank mm. and that's really because corporates whether they outside of Africa or whether they're in Africa they're trying to move across the the borders of the countries and that really you know banks like ourselves help them move cross country do the you know forex help them uh, set up business and that's really where the growth is the retail business you know over time uh, will grow but not nearly as fast as the change in the corporate businesses and that's really where the, the mm. growth is at the moment. Are we also looking to uh, increase the footprint uh, from 12 African countries right now? Yes, I mean, over time one has to have a look at uh, um, you know, countries like Nigeria, countries mm -hmm. like Angola, if you have a look at Sub-Saharan Africa those would be the two big economies that uh, we're not really involved in. We have a rep office and a wealth office in Nigeria but not involved in the day-to-day -day banking there so that would we'd have to have a look at. And then as some of the West African countries grow and get bigger, uh, and some of the East African countries like Ethiopia, once they grow, one would have to consider that. But mm. you really follow your, your clients. The more clients that go into more countries means we need to go into more countries. You've given us the outline in terms of the vision around the four subdivisions that we see. Maybe uh, give us some insights in terms of how corporate and investment banking then fits in into this newly uh, configured uh, structure. Mm. The difference before was is that we ran a corporate bank and an and, and investment bank as part of a, almost as a spoke of a global bank. Mm. Now we're actually running it uh, as part of a regional bank, so it's, a, it's, it's in a really important part of the puzzle for the regional bank. And that means you're going to drive business differently, whereas before we would look at really only the top global companies, we've now got the ability to look at the top African com um, um, uh, companies and so you can see it's, it's, that's quite a different focus but we can still draw on all the global expertise as we need it and put it into Africa but it allows us to go you know broader into the countries and have a bigger business. And I'm quite certain that uh, I mean people always ask the question about well really do we need investment banks alongside <laughs> the rest of the banks and I'm asking you here to justify your position in essence, what role uh, do investment banks fulfill in the broader market? Interestingly in Africa the, the um, revenue comes largely from corporates as opposed to if you're in New York or London where most of the revenue used to come from institutions. So in Africa particularly we play a very important role in the risk management and uh, capital you know, side of a business. So if a, if a company wants to list, 
um, they want to raise equity capital, uh, they need to do rights issues. On the, on, the, on the other side, if they are importing goods and need to um, uh, hedge out their uh, forex risk, we can provide that service for them. So the whole risk management and capital management side is very important and in Africa, as I said, it's outside of South Africa, it's 95% corporate business. So it's, it's quite an important role. Mm. And perhaps uh, just to, to take you out of Barclays and just get your insights as a, one of the industry players on the continent, what do you still perhaps see as the stubborn challenges that we still have to contend with on the African continent when it comes to accelerating the development of banking? Um, two things, you know, in South Africa, we're very privileged to have such an advanced financial market. You know, JSC is rated number one globally for governance. You, you don't see that across Africa because they're still really in the embryonic stages of you know financial markets. So there's still a lot of regulation coming out. Um, the uh, capital markets are quite nascent at the moment. Uh, but you know, having said that, uh, if you go back just you know 15 years, there were probably only about five or six African countries that had uh, global ratings. Today, there's more than 20. So it's moving, and you know we, we're seeing in the volumes. But really, those those markets need to grow. Just, you know, um, a point not to f forget, the JSC is probably eight times the size it was, you know, just, just 20 years ago. The bond exchange is 10 times mm. the size it was 20 years ago. So we've done a lot of that growth and still growing, whereas um, countries outside Africa are just starting that. Mm. If we look at uh, the eastern part of the continent, we're seeing a lot of the banks, in particular, say, an example like Equity Bank, uh, adopting a regional strategy and really starting to do business outside of their own borders. Do you see this as, uh, as a trend that is likely to take off even more than it already has? And if that's the case, how do you then fit into uh, that particular melee of activity? Mm. I can see where we will end up as, you know, for example, we, we're quite strong in East Africa, so our ability to have an East African strategy is, is actually fine at the moment. Um, but you're seeing more and more of that as the um, uh, East African countries trade more and more with each, each other, you mm. need to have a regional presence. The last thing you want long term is to be flying in bankers from, you know, Johannesburg or London the whole time. So as the markets grow up, you actually put more and more people in, firstly in the region, and then you start putting them in uh, in the countries. It's just purely a business, you know, uh, a decision around cost and revenue opportunities. So I can see Africa regionalizing quite fast, actually. Mm. Just a quick one, uh, Stephen, before I let you go, I just want us to talk about innovation and whether you're seeing Barclays moving, one, in the right direction, but also at the required pace, because it seems as if the convergence of uh, telecommunications and banking is happening at a phenomenal rate. Mm. You're exactly right. Um, we can see that happening really fast, especially in the retail space. We're obviously spending a lot of money doing that, um, you know, trying to come up with with new technology. One of the things we did recently was actually bought into a company called Rainfin, which is a peer-to-peer -peer lending company. Uh, you've seen them really grow up in uh, the US mainly, but now in Europe. Uh, this is the first you know, large platform in, in South Africa, and we're getting involved in that because that is really where the, the disruption is happening. Mm -hmm. And if you're not part of that disruption, someone else is gonna do it. So very much a big focus of ours. If you're not part of the disruption, somebody else is going to do it. I must say that's going to be the quote for this afternoon. A big thank you to Stephen Famkola. He's the chief executive of corporate and investment banking at Barclays Africa Group.